an injustice anywhere in the world is an injustice everywhere in the world. And unfortunately, Britain, the British government, Europe, India even, the United States, to some extent the United Nations have been silent on this human tragedy um, in the northern part of Sri Lanka, the, the province which the Tamil people, the area which the Tamil people called Tamililla. Historically, when the British colonised Ceylon, they discovered there was three kingdoms there. One of them was the kingdom of Tamililla in the north. Since independence of Ceylon in 1948, the Tamil people have not had the rights, their basic human rights, exercised. In 60 years, 62 years since then, many Tamil people have been killed. Today, we have a situation where 300,000 Tamils live in concentration camps. But above all, the most fundamental right for the Tamil people is the right of self-determination, the right to decide who is to govern them, the right to be masters of their own destiny. And I urge all Tamils in the diaspora, as it's going all around the world, particularly now with this referendum on the 30th and 31st of January in Britain, to participate, to give a loud message, a loud expression to the voice of their brothers and sisters in Tamil Nadu that they want an independent state. I urge them to endorse the belief that there can only be a two-state solution in Ceylon. A two-state solution which in fact is not only in the interests, in the human interests of the Tamil people, in the democratic interests, but above all also in the interests of Sri Lanka because the Sri Lankan government cannot continue to exist the Sri Lankan state cannot exist viably where one third, a quarter of their population are living under these conditions. Um, at the referendum, there will be observers from different political parties, different organisations to ensure the fairness of the uh, election itself. I am sure and I hope that after that, all politicians from all political parties who are interested in human rights, who are concerned about the well-being of the Tamil people will do their utmost to afford recognition of the result and that that transnational government which is formed thereafter will receive full diplomatic recognition both from the European Union, from Britain who has again to mention very sadly fallen short of her responsibilities to the Tamil people from the United States and above all the United Nations. And we want the United Nations now to start to take a leadership role to ensure that steps are taken. One, for Sri Lanka to be punished as a state, to be kicked out of the Commonwealth, and to ensure that steps are now taken for this referendum to be recognised within Sri Lanka itself as a first step to ensuring the self-determination of the Tamil people. I'd like to urge the Tamil people of Britain, of the British diaspora, not only in Edmonton, but all across the country, 30th and 31st of January are very important dates for your people. Again, you carry the responsibility, the weight of the burden for your brothers and sisters today who are living in Sri Lanka who cannot express themselves. Do this, not just for yourselves and for your children, but do it for them who do not have a voice. Give a voice to them. Please attend, please vote on the 30th and 31st of January and show the international community that Tamil Ilam is still alive, not only as an idea, but as a physical reality which can be manifested through the will of the international community, but beginning with you, first of all, the Tamil people. You have the chance on the 30th and 31st of January to be the voice of the voiceless. Put aside political differences, put aside any other differences that you may between you have as a diaspora. Show the international community on those days that you endorse your right to self-determination, to Tamil Nadu. Please come and vote. I strongly support the election, the referendum. I know you support it. And if I had the right to vote, if I were a Tamil, I would be the first one in the polling booth to vote.